Please be seated. It's our Thanksgiving service. I said it's our Thanksgiving service. It was mind blowing in the first service. It's going to be even more now. Because the glory of this letter house shall be greater than the glory of the former. Someone raise a shout in the house. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. My soul says yes, says yes to your will. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes, says yes. When you lead me, I will follow. When you call me, I will answer. Oh my Lord, please teach me now to know your will. When you call me, I will answer. When you lead me, I will follow. Oh my God, please teach me now to know. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. Oh, my soul says yes. Oh, says yes. First, I want to say it's an honor to have you this great morning in God's presence.
Praise God. Let me hear a loud hallelujah. Help me tell someone by your side, it's my day of testimonies. Tell another person, it's my day of miracles. Are you excited? I'm not sure you're excited. This is the last day of the month of June. Well. Somebody raise a shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I began working on a series that says Unlocking the seed of greatness within you. Unlocking the seed of greatness within you. I started this series by showing us that every child of God was created with a potential. There is a latent potential incumbent on the inside of every seed of God. But that this potential is inside does not automatically make you successful. That's why you must now know how to engage that seed. Now, if you have a seed with you, that you have a seed does not automatically mean you have a harvest. You must understand the technical know-how, the technicalities of engaging the seed so that the seed can grow. And then that particular seed transforms into a tree that brings forth fruit. And the fruit becomes another seed. You know, God created everything in cycles. Just like you have the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost order. That is the Trinity. Everything God made, there is a signature of Trinity in all of it. You have the Father, you have the Mother, you have the Child. The Father is like that seed that is planted that cannot be seen. The mother is the tree that is seen. The children are the branches that bear the fruit. Then the fruit also goes to become the seed that goes to. So God created things in the Father, Son, and Child. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Order. That is everything that God made. There is a signature of Trinity in everything that God created. Trinity signature. If you also watch critically, you would see the sun, the moon, and the stars. The sun, the moon, and the stars. Amen. So everything God has made has a duty to bring forth the purpose of its creation. That's why the graveyard is the richest place on earth. In the graveyard, songs that were never sung, books that were never written, destinies that never saw the light of the day in the graveyard. I started showing us a couple of things that are quintessential to unlocking the seed of greatness within and today i want to show us a very this is the most significant of them all and that is partnership with the holy spirit of every other thing we have spoken partnership with the holy ghost is the priority is the most important of all of them john chapter 15 and verse number 5 john 15 and verse number 5 
This is God speaking. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Now, there is an order of creation. If you watch it critically, you would understand that whatever sources a thing becomes the life wire that preserves the same thing it sources. That is whatsoever is sourced takes its life from what sources it. Now look at the meaning. When God was to create the trees, he spoke to the earth. Anytime you operate trees out of the ground, it dies. When God was to create the fishes, he spoke to the waters. Anytime you take fishes out of the water, they die. When God wanted to create man, he spoke to himself. He said, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Now, what it means is that if you have a disconnect, just like any time you take a fish out of the water, it dies. If you have a disconnect between God and man, man dies. That's why the Bible says, for without me, we can, you, you can do nothing. Now, I know you have business plans. I know you have a compendium of things you know to do. You have technical know-hows. I know you are beautiful. I know you have prepared a very excellent uh, program. You have prepared a very excellent contract. But I want you to know that until God breathes on it, it cannot become a living soul. In the Garden of Eden, man was created to us. The first creation we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. That's where the core of the man was made. Say, so let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So, that particular day, you wouldn't see man anywhere. The man was ex existing in the realms of the spirit. That's the core of the man. That's when the spiritual and the soulish components were made. After that, in Genesis 2, 7, God said, God bent down and took up the mold or the clay and then molded man. And man, let me, let me exemplify it. There is something we call the man of pain or status. If the day God created man come, comes, the day God made man, if you had seen man, man was just a statue, just like this man. Just like you would see certain people who sell clothes. There is something they call manopin that is used to display clothes. That particular thing is not living. Even though it looks like man, he has every future, but it's not alive. So after God molded man, if you met God when he was done in Genesis 2-7, man was immobile. Man could not move. Could not move. Man could not, didn't have any being. Remember God created in Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Do you know what he did? He took the man he made in Genesis 1, 26 to 28 and infused into the man of Genesis 2, 7. What did he do? He breathed on the statue and the statue became a living soul. No, what that means is that the cork of the man is not the statue because this one was immobile. It was the breath that entered that made man a living soul. It means the day man loses that breath, man ceases to exist. That's why God said to Adam, the day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Adam ate and was expecting death, but didn't die. He didn't know it was not a physical death. He lost the breath of God. Just like Jesus said, say, let the dead bury the dead. So there are people that have had cessation of life, that have moved through the passage of eternity or the sin economy of eternity. But there are people who are alive and are also dead. Jesus said, let a kind of a dead bury the dead. And I was asking myself, how can the dead have an activity to bury the dead? God told me there are two kinds of dead people. Those who are truly dead and those who are again more truly dead. These are people, even though they breathe, but their life is gone. They have been alienated from God. Alienated, complete alienation from the very life of God. So God said to Adam, the day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Adam ate the tree. He didn't die immediately, but he lost the garden. Now I want us to understand, if you, 
if you want to understand the existence of man you will not pay more attention on the statue you will not pay more attention on what this statue wears you will pay more attention on what made the statue a living soul and that is the breath of God over time we are so qualified we have we believe we have contact we believe we are beautiful enough we believe we are so great we have capabilities and capacities but not knowing that there is the core of every human existence and that is the breath of God when you lose it you have lost everything it is at this point God says without me it doesn't matter who you know or what you know without me it doesn't matter how good that business plan is without me it doesn't matter how sound you sound without me it does not matter your beauty without me it doesn't matter your connection you can do nothing partnership with the holy spirit partnership with the holy spirit Romans chapter 9 verse number 16 Romans 9 16 quickly Romans 9 16 so then it is not of him who wills nor of him who runs but of God who shows mercy not of him who wills nor of him who runs but of God who shows mercy so you can know how to run and not win you can have the willingness and fail. They say where well, there is a way, there is a way. It is not entirely true. Because the battle is not to be strong. You can be strong and not win. You can be swift and still not win. Not of him that runs, not of him that wills, but of God who showeth mercy. Can I have First Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 6? First Corinthians 3, 6, quickly. This is one of the most profound scriptures. These scriptures open my eyes to the realities of God. The Bible says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. I planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. Now, look at this. I want you to pay attention to this. The harvest is not determined by what was planted. <laughs> the harvest was not determined by even the watering. The harvest was determined by the one that gave the increase. They didn't get it. What did I say? So you can plant, you can water and not have an increase. It's possible you can plant it's possible you can water and still no increase so as much as you pay attention in planting and then watering you must know that there is more focus on the one that gave the increase because no matter what you plant and no matter how you water what you have planted if he chooses not to give the increase your effort must have been in futility The day you understand is your life changes. You know Psalm 127 was not written by David. Not all Psalms were written by David. Psalm 127 was actually written by Solomon, his son. Let's see what he said. He said, unless the Lord built the house, the labor in vain that built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Unless, if the Lord does not prosper you, there is nothing you can do. There are certain shifts that can't happen in a man's life until the Holy Ghost is giving his due place. 
there are certain levels of shift you can't see until you come to that place in your destiny that you acknowledge the Lord in all your ways until you come to that place in your destiny that you acknowledge the Lord in all you do let's see Isaiah chapter 37 verse number 31 Isaiah 37 verse number 31 Aye. and the remnant who have escaped the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit Aye. you didn't see it and the remnant who have escaped the house of Judah shall do what? Now, let me say this. Whenever you see a tree, you will think that all about the tree, the core of the tree is what eyes can see. Hope you know it is not what eyes can see. Eh? That's why you can shake off the entire fruit and lose the entirety of the fruit. And still, that particular tree will, will raise more fruit. You can even cut down the tree. Provided you didn't touch the root, the tree will be alive again. Do you know why? The tree is not all you can see. The tree is more of what eyes cannot see. If people can look at you and summarize the blessings of God upon your life, if people can explain the blessing of God upon your life, now the hand of God is not upon your life. If they can look at you and say, this is why what is happening is happening, and they can guess it right, you've not seen the hand of God. People should be able to look at you and not know why what is happening is happening. They should be able to look at you and not be able to fathom the level of grace and glory you are seeing. They should be able to look at you and not be able to comprehend the level of testimony is happening around you. They should be able to look at you and not be able to fathom and to explain the dimensions of the grace of God upon your life. Until you come to that point, you are not truly blessed. How do you explain that you cut down bamboos, you burn them, and they still grow? The Bible said the remnant that escaped shall again take root down water. If you want to grow, don't pay attention to growth upward pay attention to growth than God because the foundation of every building will determine how far it can rise the foundation of a one-story building or a bungalow cannot carry four-story building the foundation of four-story building cannot carry eight-story building if you try to put eight-story building on it it will collapse so you can't travel beyond your depth and your death is your work with the Holy Ghost that can be seen. I want to show us something. Maybe I should show us this. Get me Revelation chapter 5 verse 6. Revelation 5 6, quickly. Revelation 5 6. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns. How many horns? How many horns? Seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of the Lord sent out to all the earth. Okay. You know, this is talking about Jesus. Having seven horns and seven eyes. And you know, every believer has this. I'm going to show you. Because as he is in heaven, so are we on earth. Every believer has seven horns and seven eyes. These seven eyes talks about the the seventh spirit of the Lord. Get me the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1. Isaiah 11 verse 1 and verse 2. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Look at verse 2. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This is the seventh spirit of the Lord. The first is the spirit of the Lord. The second is the spirit of wisdom. I'm going to show you another part of this. This part is not the kind of wisdom you understand. It's not physical wisdom. This is prophetic insight into matter. This is phronesis. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. 
These are the seven spirits of the Lord. The seven spirits of the Lord. Now, but in Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, we see the seven horns that every believer has. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 6, we see the seven horns. What are these seven horns? And as I looked, I behold in the midst of the throne, the four living. Verse 12, verse 12. Revelation 5, 12. 5, 12. Saying with a loud voice, what is the Lamb who was slain to receive power? This power is political power. This is not spiritual power. Because in the other part we have that power. Now what happened is that the, the, the seven spirits of the Lord, the seven eyes, is the growth downward. When the believer develops the seven eyes, he will have seven horns. The one that is seen is the seven horns. So the seven eyes are the spiritual dimension of the Christian life. But you won't win the battle only with this spiritual dimension. You need the skills of the physical. Look at it this way. God said to Moses, when you go to the mountain, lift up your hands, pray. Nobody saw Moses. As long as he lifted up his hands, Israel was winning. But Joshua was in the valley fighting. So the activities of Joshua in the fighting is the seven horns. The activity of Moses on the mountain is the seven eyes. But it is the seven eyes that govern the seven horns. Because until you have this prophetic wisdom, until you grow depth, according to where we read 37, 31 of the book of Isaiah, you can't take height. It is the depth that reveals the height. So there are seven eyes of the Lord. Every believer is a spiritual person. It doesn't matter the skills you have in the physical. If you are not spiritual, if you joke with your spiritual life, you will lose your dominion in the physical. It is after these eyes are in place, you will now see the seven horns. What is the lamb who was slain? To receive power. Remember where we read. Verse 6. To receive, this is political power. Just keep me in verse 12. Keep me in verse 12. To receive power and riches. This is financial power. The other one is political power. To receive wisdom. Now, this wisdom, remember the other wisdom is prophetic wisdom. We call it word of wisdom. This one is the ability to take decisions that are sound. To receive strength. When we talk about this strength, it is vitality. Because the very vehicle that will drive the destiny need to be healthy. So this is strength in the physical. This is health. To receive honor. This is influence. To receive glory. This is a level of a place God brings a man. That that man becomes a reference point in his generation. And then to receive blessings. The first dimension are the seven eyes of the spirit of the Lord. The second dimension are the seven horns. But it is the seven eyes that determines the seven horns. The seven eyes are the depth. The seven horns are the height. Seven eyes talks about your spirituality. Your prophetic work with the Holy Spirit. Seven horns talk about your dominion as a result of the work. So like Moses, you need to lift up your hand in the mountain. So that Joshua can win in the valley. When you joke with the spiritual component, you will lose in the physical. How many of us know? How many of us know that the earth is more spiritual than you can understand? You didn't hear what I said. No, you didn't hear it. What did I say? What did I say? Sir, there is no destiny without the supernatural. Don't think you have a destiny without this one. No, you don't. Don't. That's why you must pay attention to the breath. Because the very core of man is that breath that God gave him. Now, I want to ask you, have you started partnering with the Holy Ghost? You must come to that point in your journey with God that you are in partnership with him. You are in partnership with him. You are in partnership with him. You are in partnership with the Holy Spirit.
It has been confirmed that spirituality is the bedrock of destiny. Your spiritual root in God determines what you can become in life. Your debt in God determines your success in life and in destiny. Now, I want to show us keys to partnering with the Holy Spirit. What are the keys to having spiritual buoyancy? Number one is brokenness. Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12. Number one is brokenness. Brokenness. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Hosea 10 12. Sow for yourself righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. Your heart is so strong. Break those fallow ground. All of those inhibitions. All of those anger in your soul. Bitterness in your spirit. All of those unforgiveness. All of those I have arrived mentality. Your pride. Break it. Break the fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Don't stop until you witness him. Break your fallow ground. Break your fallow ground. It is time to seek the Lord. Until he comes and sends rain. Some of us are too. Even how we pray. If you see me pray, you will think I slept with five ladies one, one hour before. Because I'm in his presence. I know how limited I am. How white can your white be? That's why the Bible says all our righteousness are but filthy rags before him. How white can your white be? How holy can you be before the all holy God? So I come before him and I know my limitation. This morning, the first thing I did when I came, I knelt down. I told him, I don't have a word to speak. Not because I didn't prepare. I said to him, give me utterance to divide this word of truth. Something happened. A particular young lady was believing God for something. It was a contract she was believing God for. She said she had gone in for this contract severally and they kept on denying her. She said, I want to go again. And so I have met everyone I know in that board. I said, that's where the problem is. I said, have you met God? She said, that's why I'm calling you. I said, no, you have to dig your own well. I said, take out time in retreats and go and pray. She said, do you have a suggestion? I I said, whatever the spirit leads you to. She called me that she has never done it. She will go into a fast for one day. I said, that's right. So she shut her phone, shut down all communication and went to God. By the time she was done, the tender was supposed to be in days later. They had called and called. She got many messages. And the messages said, we've been trying to reach you. So, so person has been trying to reach you. Why is your number unreachable? The lady got frightened and called me. I said, call the person and tell the person, you went out on a retreat. A Muslim. She called the person, the person didn't take. She started going to the Federal Ministry of Work and she got there. She met the man. The man said, you are not serious. She said to the man, please, I am sorry. I was out for a retreat. The man said, retreat for what? I went to go and pray. The man said, someone like you can pray? When others are wasting their times and doing things? He said, the job has been given. Another person has taken it. But follow me. Took her by the hand. This time around. Two his organ 
and say to his elder, please, this is my sister. Can you please give her that job? The other said, ah, but it has been, please, sir. Does she have the experience? Experience for what? The man said, yes, she does. They walked out of that place. That's how a job was given. Now, contract. Ask me what the contract is. The supply of bulletproof vests for the military. The lady has never seen real bulletproof with her eyes. She told the man, sir, this is so much. She was pursuing a contract of less than a hundred million. I think 90 something million. This time around, this one does not run in millions. It gets into billions. The man said, make your consultations. Take this number and call. Take this number and call. Tell them I sent you. I did this kind of thing a while ago, but do it. Call the people. He sent me. They said, if he sent you, we are going to give you at the same price of Olga. When she pressed the money, this was happening on the altar, our altar, altar of glory, the prophetic morning devotion. She said, I can't understand it until she was advanced so much money. And she started. She had done the first phase. Do you know what happened? When she went to the Lord, the Lord went to men. You can sit down and wait for men for five hours in their offices. Why they come and leave you? Have you waited on the Lord? They that wait upon the Lord shall be strong. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be tired. They shall walk and not be weary because the joy of the Lord shall be their strength. One of the things the Lord helped me early in life is not to trust in man because man is vain. Man is frail. Man is vain. The man that gave you a promise today can die. That said, come tomorrow, can die tonight. When God becomes your source, he will raise channels. You can wait for a man for nine hours. I've waited for a man of God before from 10 in the morning till 5 p.m. The man came and said, oh, you are waiting. Several years ago, he said, you've been waiting. Okay, let's do it tomorrow. My wife knows. The following day I came and I waited like that. It was a text he discharged me from. I got angry. The Lord said, no, don't be angry. Can't be angry with grace. He said, but can you wait on me as you waited for this man? We are the real sources. So you have a lot of activities in the physical. You run around, you know a lot of people. It's not bad to have contact and to do certain things. But I want you to understand that there is a dimension that superintends over every other dimension. And that is the spiritual dimension. If you don't get it, you cannot accept. That's why Jesus didn't begin his ministry until he got the announcement. Jesus was God. Jesus Christ was God. But he had to kneel down at the Jordan River praying the heaven open. He had to go through the baptism, the sacrament of baptism of John. Kneeling down praying his heaven open. And God spoke from heaven and said, This is my only begotten son with whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. You see that word? Hear ye him. Became the open door that opened the doors of Jesus. You don't run a ministry because you know how to preach. There must be a hear ye him on that ministry. There must be a hear ye him on that business. How can your brand take the business word? You think it's by developing great ideas. That's why I watch it now. There are dimensions of wealth you can't have until the spirits give it to you. There is, you see that kind of wealth, extreme wealth. This wealth are not sponsored by men. No, no. no. Watch it. Everyone that has it has an agenda. Watch, watch these billionaires. Their agendas are deep in the occultic world because this is the power that brought it. There are dimensions of wealth. You see that kind of wealth, those volumes. It's only spirits can sponsor it. And spirits that sponsor that kind of wealth come with their agenda. 
they will give you the agenda either sell your soul and lead a lot of people to hell take wealth the devil told jesus bow down and i will give you all the kingdoms of the world what it means is from henceforth that wealth will now be a messenger in my hand to oppress people have you not wondered how some people come to government houses and become wicked you think they want to be wicked it is who they sow their souls to that is using them that's why there are people that can never give people money. They will take drinks of 3 million naira and cannot give you 100,000. Do you know why? Where they came from, I, that wealth is sponsored. There is an agenda they are executing. And when you don't understand it, you are in pursuit of this. God said, let me teach you what to do. He said, seek ye first the spiritual dimension. He said, when you get it, every other thing pursues you. The thought and follow you here. It is not Satan that originated it. It came from God. That is what the mysterious realm of favor. Seek ye first. Get this spiritual dimension. Someone called me, started following me. A young man, he plays abroad. He was going to go for, uh, what is it called? Trials in Copenhagen, FC Copenhagen. They are playing Champions League. He told me that he's not scoring. He used to score. But he went on a gold drought for months. I think he had two for several months. So the club started being in doubt when the window opened. Before the window opened for the trials. So that he can be signed or not. So when I was praying for him, I told him, he told me of how the things he has done. That, you know, I was praying. I said, use the word I was. What of your time? He said, I, I started following up, you know, social and I don't see the need for tight again. Now listen, you know, you turn on to your social media, you want them to pass on. It's just like there is a campaign going on now. You don't have to wed in the church. That all this wedding, church wedding is not necessary. Just do your traditional marriage. It's okay. It's wedding in the Bible. And you are buying it. Who is teaching you? Excuse me. Do you know that marriage is the only institution God founded? How can you do marriage outside the founder? Hey. The only problem is that you think that you have to be on a white wedding gown and a suit. That's not even the wedding. The wedding is that the priests speak over the marriage. Whether it is in the office or at the altar and vows are exchanged. You can wear pink and red and it is wedding. You didn't understand what I just said. But you can't do it without the priest. That's why Jesus said, Go show yourself to the priest. And then a lot of people are already in that. Uh, you know, don't uh, don't have to wed. <laughs> Just let your father and your mother bless the the in law. Who is teaching you? Where are you learning that fallacy? Go and do it like that. Go and do it. Don't allow God witness the wedding when you come before a priest. And listen, no matter what your father and your mother does or do, they can't replace priesthood. There are blessings that your parents give to his called patriarchal order. But there is a priesthood blessing. That only one who stands in that office. If you want God, ask Saul. Ask Saul. He said, oh, Prophet Samuel is not coming. After all, I'm a king. I know what he does. And I can do it. They all say, how dare you? There are people designated to offer sacrifices. Why didn't Jesus say, go on the road and show yourself to anyone? He says, show yourself to the priest. So, your father blesses you, your mother blesses you, your in-law blesses you, it is enough. No, do it like that now. Don't bring God into it. When you come before a priest, remember, I said, the wedding does not have to do with having a ceremony. It can even be on the day of your traditional marriage and your pastor is closed. He doesn't need a microphone. He tells the two of you, take this ring. Take this ring. You exchange vow. I bless this marriage in the name of God the Father. 
what it means is that the source of marriage comes it can be in the office so all the exigencies of planning for wedding gown and that should be you are now the one trying to add certain things to am i talking to somebody here you don't have to wear white you don't have to wear you can wear red that's why i told you guys if you want to do a wedding with our cry incense has come it's not just have a veil a cry, that's what you want to wear it's okay you don't have to wear white and wear black and then come. no what matters is i join you in the name of god the father i join you in the name of god the son i join you in the name of god the holy ghost once that happens the entirety of the godhead says amen and then god bears witness to it do you understand it that's it he can be in the office he can be anywhere can be anywhere so if you are here you've never wedded you are thinking you are telling your husband you will take you need the hair go you people should get a ring come for your wedding on tuesday if you have rings now but there have to be rings you've never put on if you have rings new rings you come and after the service we declare these vows we say say this with this ring i wed you in the name of god the father the son and it is exchange who name me go wedding who name me wedding yes yes but that's it but that's it but that's it that's it that's the core every other thing is an activity if you want to do it it's fine it's your day it's an activity but the core of the wedding and that's even the most important areas to pay attention to don't pay attention to trad. Pay attention to the priesthood blessing. Pay attention to the priestly oath. You see all those registry. Of course, you know, you want to go and do court wedding because you want to travel abroad. But if you want your marriage to be sealed in peace, you must wed. The priest must speak over the marriage. It doesn't have to be big. You have to understand it. So if we have the chance and you invite us to your trad, you are having the trad, is in your trad. You can give 10 minutes for that. We're coming with another dimension that changes things. By the time your father has spoken, your mother has spoken, your in-laws have spoken, we hand over. There is one that founded the marriage now. You now open the door of the marriage and tell him, pass step in. And then before the priest, he declares you married. God becomes the headstone of that union. So all these things you are following, be careful. The young man told me, I started following online and they were talking about tithing and I stopped paying tight. I said, what of prayer? He said, yes, I used to pray before I play match, but I will finish training this time. And I will not have the strength anymore. I said, that's where the problem is. I said, that's where the problem is. He said, what do I do? I said, you need to pay your tithe. He said, okay, sir. I don't know what it is, but I will send it. I said, no, don't send it to me. I said, you see those tithes you defaulted. A priest was superintending over you before I became your pastor. He said, yes. I said, even though you can't remember what it is again, but take sacrificial sacrifices send it to that priest because your tithe is meant for where you are fed spiritually a lot of people don't understand it a young man came to me i was in portaco he had about five hundred thousand. he had about i think he had about eighty thousand see eighty thousand was his seat five hundred thousand was a tithe and i preached in his church i said what happened to your church he said, no, I was led to, I said, you can't be led to give me your tithe. If you read Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, he said, bring your tithe into the storehouse. That storehouse is where you are fed with knowledge and with wisdom. I will give you pastors after your own heart. I said, you don't give it to me. You go drop it there. I said, this is what now belongs to me. I opened his eyes to the scriptures. I told the young man, I said, that's where you go to give it to you can scatter your seed, but you don't scatter your tithe. And he was shocked. I said, when you are done, now 
make it a make it a duty to be a titan from henceforth. He had a match. I told him to be in just to get up in the night and pray. I want you to understand. It might not be one hour. Sometimes you can waste six hours in prayers. It can be 15 consolidated moments with the Holy Spirit. And you are consistent. He got up, he said, he prayed the much he can, he could. The following match is called four goals. Now, let me tell you, the first goal, according to him, he played the ball, it was going, the defender brought it in. The second one, it was his bomb bomb, it entered the net. He said he didn't know how he was positioning himself. He says, I want to, inc-. I said, that's it. That's it. How is it that Paul Toba was suspended by FIFA? Because he played football with witchcraft. You think they don't know this? They caught him and he was under suspension and then doping also. They say, you can't do that. You can't do They understand that these things are real. Oh. They say, you know, they play football with you. Who told you? So long as the earth is concerned, the spiritual will always control the physical. They will say, both of those who play and they're lost. It means that what the other ones enter the pitch with is higher than what the other ones are. It may not be, it may be that there is one that hosted God, but there is one with a higher dimension of the negative supernatural. The young man started taking care of this. Now, he later went that to that Copenhagen. He signed a contract as we speak, as we speak with FC Copenhagen. This was something that was deemed not possible. I was ministering prophetic money devotion. I called a woman who had a son, who has a son, and the son was going to go for a trial abroad and sustained an injury. He woke up and his ankle started paining him. From that, he couldn't match it on the ground. When I prayed, the Lord told me when the woman came, the woman was screaming because everything was already sealed. The guy was supposed to travel. This was uh, CSK Moscow or something. Think that, that club. The woman started saying it everywhere in the shop. And the, someone that was close to her took a lizard and just took a pin. The lizard couldn't run. And said, come and play again on earth. Let me see. These things are real. Who backs your business? What is the voice that has spoken over that business? A spiritual dimension. You think products enter the market. Do you know how demonic the market realm is? <laughs> Do you know how demonic the market realm is? You think you stay in the market by having a good product. Someone can go and keep it on the altar and make a sacrifice over that product for six months. And all your customers will lose interest. There are beautiful brands that we are bought over, not because they were not doing well. But because they were run out of business from the spiritual grand point. I know of a beautiful hotel in this town. We went to pray several years ago. It's old now, very old. Beautiful hotel, it was built those years. I was in Efak in 1999 or 2000. And they took me, we just finished post evangelism. It was my spiritual mother that said, let us go and pray. She knew I had the gift of sight. This person built a hotel. Nobody comes to the hotel. 25 rooms, I won't forget. Nobody comes to the hotel. They must say, what is this? Beautiful location. As I came there to pray, I came to pray. I saw someone bending over, pooing. That was my first time of knowing that. The Holy Ghost said that just like the smell of poopoo scatter, you know, a walk wage and see walk. That's what was done. And then the place was shut down. And then we finished praying the hotel, opened up. You think he's on having beautiful aesthetics, my friend. If you want to understand the secret of dominion, don't behave like Lot. Behave like Abraham. Lot saw a beautiful place and chose it. Abraham saw a dry ground 
and then went to that place but the difference is that when he came to that dry ground he knew what to do he raised an altar and the dry land became a fruitful land lot went to a place with the glamour of it and no altar was raised and the place that was fertile all of a sudden became fruitless it's in altars you have raised the spiritual dimension there must be a partnership rooted in the realms of the spirit One day you will know that you don't marry right because you have good shape. One day you will understand that it is not those who made A's in mathematics A1. Overall best in school that become overall best in life. By the time everyone graduates, you will know that life is more than mathematics. Life is more than physics. There is a dimension of life you must identify with if you must rule. That's the spiritual dimension. The negative people, they understand this. They know you don't win politics by just vote casting. But there are two aspects of it. You can win by vote casting and lose by vote counting. We saw it happen. No? You can win by vote casting and lose by what matters is not vote casting it is vote counting I... a commission of police took over a, a police headquarters in the western part of nigeria i have my friend who is in portugal this man sat he, he brought his own chair he heard that the person there was diabolic he brought his chair sat down and then he couldn't walk again they prayed and prayed and prayed but you know in this thing we do there are professionals in certain things like marriage is not not my field i can teach it but it's i'm, it's, I'm not a, it's not I'm, it's not my specialty we have specialties in these things i am i am of the supernatural tribe that's what we do so my friend had prayed and said there is a man of god we need to bring and they brought the man to me when the man came nothing was discovered he came as a vegetable he would stay like this he wasn't sitting he would stay like this his leg every part of his body paralyzed when i looked at him i saw the wickedness <laughs> Of someone that left the place and says, Sit on the seat, let me see. He's a police officer. I didn't want to go straight. So when he came, he started hearing rumors that the man was, he brought his own chair. He didn't know. He didn't know it was not about the chair, it was about the office. He sat on his own chair and became paralyzed. And what I was talking, seven months had gone. The one that was called to leave the place had been called back to stay on the interior. This man was literally turned into a vegetable. There is something called the rod of the spirit. That's why. Ah. Elohim is here with us. We are not standing alone. Moment of mercy, he asked God for forgiveness. And then after that, we started speaking. I told him, stand up. He said, I said, you can rise. Because what happened had been disconnected in the realms of the spirit. I have a young lady like that who got scholarship. They gave a scholarship in a particular university to be running, to be doing a particular uh, sports while they are training her free. She got to that place, wasn't having any heart issue. After she started excelling, all of a sudden they diagnosed her of a heart issue. It was a heart issue. Do you know where that thing came from? From Bini City. Someone heard and said, your heart will fail. 
where she was in the United States, her heart failed. Several tests showed that her heart was so bad. The school revoked the scholarship and she was almost being deported. Spiritual legislation. That's how she got healed. So the man got up and started working. He told me, I want to know what happened. I said, I won't tell you. He said, is it my prejudice? I won't do anything. I said, I won't tell you. He said, police know the judge you do now. What did I feel do? I said, I won't tell you anything. I said, but listen, what made you, what got you paralyzed is a heavy sacrifice. Now you can walk. Go to your altar. Close your eyes and shake that altar with a sacrifice. He said, yes, sir. He went back. According to him, he said he got to the office invigorated, didn't tell anybody, unannounced. And then this person said, and said, how come? How come? <laughs> he told the man, I am now fine. I went through spiritual cleansing and I am ready for the job. You know, those that know, those that don't know it, don't you think you will just sing a song and the whole world will hear it. Spirits sponsor songs. It is not. How have you been hearing certain rubbish you know that nobody should even sing? It's raining everywhere. Because these songs are sponsored. Is your business sponsored? Is your destiny sponsored? Having done all to stand, there is a dimension of intimacy with the Holy Ghost. You must acknowledge Him in all your ways. Never come to a point in your life that you are no longer His child in His presence. Always be His child. That you can lay down anywhere. Don't be too big for Him. Contrition is one sign that the Holy Ghost is dwelling in you. I want to pray. Pastor here, the earth is deeper than you know. This night, I say, don't forget it. The earth. God's oracle, the earth. You see here, is deeper. You think that the surface you see is the first thing God created. No, now. He created the deep first. God created the deep and then asked the deep to create what you can see. That's why the deep is 75% of the earth. So if you don't have the technical know-how to control the deep, you can't rule in the physical. He created the deep. God, you know God didn't create. He created the deep and asked the deep to create the visible world. He spoke to the waters to give birth to the earth now. God didn't create this place you are staying. That's why even beneath here, if you go deep and deep and deep, you will discover water. The deep is everywhere. So how can you be here and not understand? Get me that scripture again, 37, 31 of the book of Isaiah. When they took root deep, they grew upward. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. So if you don't understand spiritual activity, if you don't understand this indices of the spirit, you cannot rule in the physical. Must take charge. Must take charge. You think these days you can raise godly children by advice? When social media is advising them, you've lost them. If you think it is the only thing you say, my friend, covenant them. Covenant them. They will advise themselves. Bring them. God said I will bless Abraham because he will bring his children into the tabernacle of tent. Start bringing them before they know themselves. Advice cannot raise this 21st century. It can't. If not, you will, have a, you will be a thicken in church and see your child dancing naked in TikTok for views. But there is something you can do on your knees. 
You can in the crucible of prayer mold your destiny. You can look at them in the night when they are sleeping on your knees and tell them, listen, you will not be wasted. You cannot be a gay. You can bring reproach to my family. On your knees, you can mold them. There is no destiny that cannot be molded on our knees. Rise to your feet wherever you are.